All right, everybody. Saturday Bible study. Go ahead and cross off column one, which is where we're at. My dad's old Bible. So let's continue with Nebuchadnezzar's story that he himself wrote on his road to being called to salvation, his road to humility, which is the road every sheep must. Well, think about Paul. Paul, whose name at the time was Saul, was on the road to Damascus when the bright light hit him and called down to him. Paul, why do you, um, excuse me, Saul, why do you persecute me so? He knew it was the Lord, but he was still asking who it was. He was confused. He was scared. I mean, his sight was removed. He was humbled greatly. That's what happens. We have to almost be busted down to our lowest point to then be brought back up. All right, so they shall drive thee from men, and thy dwelling shall be with the beast of the field. And they shall make me to eat the grass as an oxen. So this is going to be his humility phase. Seven times, so seven months or seven years, more than likely seven years, he was out there, nails growing long, hair growing long, and he was able to survive as a as a human, God allowed him to eat grass, allowed his entire body to be able to eat what oxen or beast of the field ate. And that's what his body was good with. To live like a beast or an oxen, to thrive like one, but only at that low level of a beast ox. And seven times shall pass over, well, you shall be wet with the dew of heaven. And seven times shall pass over thee till thou know. In other words, until you get the call. That the most high ruleth in the kingdom of men. Without the calling, without God putting you through this process. Let me ask you, where's the free will decision in this? There is no free will. Not Old Testament, not New Testament, not anywhere in the Bible. Did man make a free will decision without the Lord's call, without the Lord putting it in their heart first? Look what the Lord's doing to them. Is this by his will? No. But still, it's just describing it. He hasn't gotten to that point yet, so let's keep going. Till thou know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men and giveth it to whomever he will. And whereas they commanded to leave the stump of the tree roots, the kingdom shall be sure unto thee. So it's still going to be yours when you come back. Imagine that Babylon being ruled by a sheep. Why is that? They were over the captives of Judea. They were over Israel. They were over God's chosen people. Which, of course, in today's times, the only chosen people are the sheep. There is a remnant of the bloodline that will be called when the last non-bloodline member comes into the fold. That's in my playlist on both my Bible study channel and in my, uh, on my regular channel. Wherefore, O king, and if you're looking for it and you can't find it, just ask. Wherefore, O king, let my counsel be acceptable unto thee and break off thy sins by righteousness. So he's telling him to make that free will decision, isn't he? Let what I'm telling you be good enough for you to understand so you can stop doing the things you're doing and thine iniquities by showing mercy to the poor. It may be lengthening of thy tranquility. All this came upon Nick, King Nebuchadnezzar. At the end of the 12 months, he walked into his palace of the kingdom of Babylon, 
the king's big mouth. Oops. I mean, the king spake and said, is not this great Babylon that I, notice I highlighted it, I have built for the house of the kingdom by the might of my power and for the honor of my majesty. So could he have not been any more braggadocious or could he have been more any braggadocious? While the word was in the king's mouth, there fell a voice from heaven saying, O king Nebuchadnezzar, to thee it is spoken. The kingdom is departed from thee. Temporarily. Remember, we're leaving the roots. And they shall drive thee from men, and thy dwelling shall be with the beast of the field, and they shall make thee eat the grass of the oxen, and seven times shall pass over thee, until thou knowest that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men, and giveth to whoever he will. All right, we'll get more to that story tomorrow. Let's continue finishing up with John 7, moving into John 8. Fifty one, fifty two. Most ancient Greek manuscripts do not include John fifty three. Then the meeting broke up and everybody went home, and every man went unto his own house. Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. Jesus returned to the Mount of Olives. One, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now we got them all. Let's go. Any mistakes we will fix. It is legal to convict a man before he is given a hearing. Yes. And they replied, are you from Galilee too? Search the scriptures and see for yourself. No prophet ever comes from Galilee. Then the meeting broke up and everybody went home. Jesus returned to the Mount of Olives, but early in the next morning, he was back again to the temple. And by the way, yesterday's Bible study, I cover all of that. We detail it, so I'm not going to go through it again with you. But yesterday's was long, and I'm sorry, 52 minutes, 25 seconds. I'm sorry. Uh, it was deep. It was detailed. Take your time with it if the Lord calls you to it. Jesus returned to the Mount of Olives, but early the next morning, he was back again to the temple. A crowd soon gathered, and he sat down and taught them. And as he was speaking, the teachers of religious law and the Pharisees, who, you know, eventually were going to crucify him, Brought a woman who had been caught in the act of adultery. They put her in the front of the crowd. Teacher, they said, this woman was caught in the act of adultery. The law of Moses says to stone her. What do you say? They were trying to trap him into something they could use against him. But Jesus stopped, stooped down, excuse me, and wrote in the dust with his finger. They kept demanding an answer as he stood up again and said, all right, but let the one who has never sinned throw the first stone. Then he stooped down again and wrote in the dust. When the accusers heard this, they slipped away one by one, beginning with the oldest, until Jesus was left in the middle of the crowd with the woman only. All right. Love you very much. Ask questions anytime.